Hey everyone, and welcome to another Zim tutorial. Today I want to explain you what the Zim feature Boost does, and in which scenarios it is a good idea to use it. Boost is one of three new features that have been added to the Zim with the latest firmware update. In my previous video I already explained the new Simulate Analog Behavior feature, the next one that I will upload will be about the new Steady Aim option. With these three features it is now possible to break into or out of the aim assist bubble that covers a target without any problems. The reason is that those features have a noticeable influence on the strength of the aim assist. They will reduce, or even completely remove situations in which the aim assist pushes you away from the target. Overall these three features will now play a very big role when creating a game configuration to adjust the aim assist of the game. Therefore, if you would like me to update one of my old game configuration video tutorials just let me know in the comments down below and I will do a new one. A lot of work has gone into this firmware, so I would highly appreciate it if you could share your experience with it in the Zim forum or in the comments down below under this video. So, let's start with a closer look at the new boost feature. To find this feature, start your Zim Manager and connect it to your Zim. When the Zim Manager is running, click on the options in the top right. After that click on the Global Settings button. In the following menu you can activate the Expert Mode by ticking the box next to it. This is necessary to get access to the Boost feature. Once you have done that, you can press the Save button in the bottom right and leave this option. The boost feature can now be found in your game configuration. So click on the edit button in the top left of your Zim manager to enter the configuration mode of your Zim game profile. After that, swipe one time to the right to enter the hip menu. The boost feature is part of the advanced sensitivity options and you can adjust it for both your hip and aim down sights sub configuration. Press the button with the three dots below your hip or aim down sight sensitivity to expand the advanced settings. You can now find it near the bottom of the advanced settings. If the feature isn't listed in the advanced options, then you have to update your Zim firmware and manager to the latest version. You can download these updates from the Zim forum. In the video description you can find a download link which also includes a step-by-step -step guide on how to update your Zim firmware and Zim manager. So, what exactly does the new Boost feature actually do? The short version is that Boost does two things. On the one hand it will slightly increase your mouse sensitivity. If you do not use a very high Boost value you will hardly notice this sensitivity increasement though. The other thing it does is much more noticeable and the main reason why you would want to use Boost. It raises the lowest possible speed with which you can move your crosshair in the game. Think about a parking car with a running engine. When you start to gently press the accelerator, the car will begin to slowly move from 0 to let's say 20 miles per hour. However, with a Zim boost value of 3500, the car will instantly move with 35 miles per hour the moment you touch the accelerator. The boost basically removes the possibility to drive with a speed of less than 35 miles per hour. To make this clearer, let's look at the following example. There are two enemies, and your crosshair is already on enemy 1. You now want to switch your crosshair to the other enemy because he is a bigger threat. Without boost you would just move your mouse to the right until your crosshair is on the other target. I showcased this movement with a green arrow. Let's look at the same example again, but this time with a specific boost value of 3000. You will move your mouse with the same distance as before and at the very same speed. This is again indicated by the green arrow just like before. Now, the moment you start to move your mouse, the boost of 3000 kicks in. This is demonstrated by the red arrow. Your crosshair speed will not start at zero anymore but at a much higher base speed. Just think about the car example from before. You are basically adding an instant boost of 3000 units to your mouse movements. Your overall mouse movement will therefore look like the following. 
The boost arrow and the regular mouse movement will add on top of each other, which results in the blue arrow. The blue one is the actual crosshair movement that you will see on your screen. Your crosshair would now be on the right side of the target. Of course in a real scenario you would stop moving your mouse once you are on the target. Now that you have a better understanding of this feature, let's look at the benefits and disadvantages of Boost. The first advantage is to make slow turning game elements more responsive. I'm sure you have already experienced game scenarios in which your mouse movements felt very slow and heavy. The game reduced your sensitivity by quite a lot and it was very difficult to move your crosshair around. Typical situations for this are turrets or vehicles. With boost however, you can make those slow turning game aspects a lot faster and more responsive. A vehicle or turret will no longer feel extremely slow or heavy. Especially with a ballistic curve on top you can achieve excellent turn speeds when using those slow moving game elements. The second advantage of boost is to reduce or remove the aim assist of a game. The faster initial mouse movements coming from the boost will allow you to enter, or to leave the aim assist bubble a lot easier. This is similar to the simulate analog behavior that I explained in the other video, however boost is doing one more thing that simulate analog behavior doesn't. It will also reduce the overall strength of the aim assist. The reason is that those faster initial mouse movements are too aggressive for the aim assist algorithm. A regular analog stick from a controller cannot replicate those very aggressive movements that basically appear out of nowhere. This confuses the algorithm and as a result, the aim assist is heavily reduced. Depending on what values you use for this feature you can customize the strength of the aim assist and find your own sweet spot. This is something that I will address at the end of the video when I go over the range of values that you can use with boost. The third advantage is to inflate the dead zone of your aiming inputs. At its core, this is exactly what boost is doing. It artificially inflates the game's aiming stick dead zone. This can be very beneficial when you want to use your Zim with a game that doesn't have any Zim support yet. You are then required to use a different game configuration for this unsupported game. Thanks to Boost though, you can now adjust the dead zone of this different game configuration until it fully matches the dead zone of the game that you want to play. The disadvantage of boost is that it basically reduces your overall aim accuracy. Depending on how much boost you use, your micro mouse movements can become very jumpy and might stutter a lot. The more boost you use, the stronger those micro stutters will become. Therefore it is necessary to use reasonable values to prevent this accuracy reduction. With the correct values you will not notice the boost, yet your aim assist will get noticeably reduced. In the last few minutes I want to discuss exactly that, to give you an idea of what values work best with this feature. As you probably already saw in the Zim Manager, the boost feature has a strength slider to customize its effect. The possible value range that you can use goes from 0 to 30,000. A value of 0 will deactivate the boost while 30,000 is the maximum strength that you can use. In general, a value of 100 to 1000 is ideal for most games if you want to reduce the aim assist. You should not notice any negative effects on your mouse accuracy when staying in that value range. Start with 0 and increase the boost value in increments of 100 until you find your sweet spot. If you want to increase the responsiveness and turn speed of a vehicle or turret, then I would recommend to start with a boost value of 1000 and increase it in increments of 500 until the micro movements are very responsive. You can then add a ballistic curve on top to achieve an even higher turn speed. As for using a different game configuration for an unsupported game, there is no real value range that I can recommend you to use. Start with a boost of 100 and increase it in increments of 500 until your mouse movements start to become responsive. After that, continue in steps of 100 until they are perfect. 
overall every game has a different game mechanic, therefore you need to customize this feature for every game individually. The boost value that works for one game might not do it for a different game. If you have any questions about the Zim, or about the boost feature, just ask in the comments down below. If you liked this video, hit the like button or even subscribe to this channel. Also, let me know if you would like to see more of these tutorials in the comments down below, and I will maybe see you in the next one. Until then, enjoy your Zim experience.